Mississippi. We have come through the arches in St. Louis for week five of the Arena Football League on the Duke. Stampede are off to a 4-0 start due to the efforts of Daryl Hammond and his receiving counterpart, Marcus Badgett. Multi-dimensional offensively, he's part of a terrific Terrapin trio. For the Milwaukee Mustangs, Gary Compton is their best all-around receiver. Five touchdowns on the year. And Todd Hamill is the Mustang leader. A quiet killer looking to avoid a stampede tonight. We welcome you inside tonight's venue. We are in the Keel Center in St. Louis, Missouri. This is week five of the AFL on the Deuce. Our matchup tonight, the Milwaukee Mustangs and the St. Louis Stampede. Both members of the American Conference Central Division. St. Louis, the perfect 4-0. Milwaukee, 1 and 3. As we take a look at tonight's headlines for this contest in week five, I must mention the Stampede of St. Louis, the first ever expansion team in Arena Football League history to open up with a 4-0 record. And the Mustangs looking for their second win, not only of this year, but of their existence in the AFL. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. We welcome you to this evening's telecast. I'm joined by Big Doc Walker and Doc. Talk about Milwaukee. Finally, and I mean finally, they got their first win one week ago. They also got their first night's sleep. I mean, this has been a troubled organization in terms of trying to get a win. They've got talent, they're well run, and now the gorilla is off their back. And the guy who wants more is the leader, Todd Hamill. He's a shifty quarterback, doesn't do a whole lot special, but he gets the job done. Shifty's a key word, as you mentioned. This guy can get out of the pocket. He's smart with the football, doesn't make mistakes. The best all-around receiver, Bruce Compton for the Milwaukee Mustangs. Versatile, multi-dimensional. Well, Compton gives him another dimension. He's strong. He bench press 350 pounds, gets open, and can make you miss. As you look at the offensive lineup, you must keep an eye on number 81, Terry Simeon. Boy, Simeon, what a delight as a return specialist. This guy is built like a, a Mack truck. He'll run you over to about 205 pounds. If you've heard of ACC football, you remember this name, John Kaleo, the St. Louis quarterback. Boy, Kaleo. You know, some guys are just born to play arena football. He has a field for it and hooks up extremely well. He's a leader, pretty much like a coach on the field. Eight catches, two touchdowns two weeks ago against Milwaukee for St. Louis is Daryl Hammond. Well, Daryl Hammond is an unusual guy. He loves to play defense. Tell me he considers himself a defensive player, but he's done some remarkable things on the offensive side. And when you combine that uh, with Marcus Baggins, Magic had a uh, bruised rib cage, and really it's going to be 100% for the first time in two weeks. Hammond gives him great production. We talked about Barber and Woods. This is a terrific offensive group. That's one of the reasons why the Stampede are undefeated. And the St. Louis Stampede back deep is number five, and that is Terrence Barber. Nine kickoff returns as long, 45 yards on the season. And a kick with Kenny Sucker, and we are underway here at the Keel Center in St. Louis Arena Football League Week 5. Played off the net by Barber. Barber up on the near side and out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The quarterback we spoke of, John Kaleo, number three, six foot, 200 pounder in his third year, a member of the Maryland Terrapins, and this year against Milwaukee, what a game he had two weeks ago. Four touchdowns, just one interception, threw for over 300 yards. About last week, 26 to 39, 291 yards, five touchdowns. And Kaleo and the Stampede will start first and 10 on the 18 yard right. line. Oh. Kaleo quick hit to number seven. And that is Daryl Hammond. Go, go, go. Boy, Daryl Hammond, you can't find anybody in this organization that just doesn't give him the ultimate uh, the superlative. They think this guy can play with like a Barry Wagner in this league. The defensive setup for the Mustangs, Benson, Barry, and Jarvis up front, McComb, Compton, and then James Harper and Plummer. As James and Plummer are the defensive specialists, and what a career Bruce Plummer had, over 50 career NFL appearances. You will like him a lot. He's the hammer. Second down now, Kaleo. And the first down, Yannis is good. The reception made by Terrence Barber, the second-year player out of Florida. Kenny Harper lined up on the inside position. One of the things that Will McClain, defensive coordinator for the Mustangs, had to do was change things up. You're going to see some out of this Mustang. 22 on quick, right? Louis Stampede off to a great start. 4-0, as I mentioned, the first ever expansion team to open an AFL season with a 4-0 record. 
fumbled football. It hits the turf, and let's see who picks it up. Ball is still being worked for. And I think indeed the Milwaukee Mustangs have picked up the fumble out of the hands of number seven, Daryl Hammond. Turnovers are key. You definitely want to be able to hold serve. But this is a play where, you know, in arena football, you throw the ball 75, 80% of the time. You do want to mix up the runs. This is one case where a blunder hurts you early at home. Early turnover by St. Louis. Back after this. If you're looking for a reliable place to service your car or truck, I've got great news for you. Now at Pep Boys, air conditioning system check for only $19.99. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Pep Boys has a huge selection of name brand car care products at incredible low prices, like STP brake fluid or STP power steering fluid. Now only 24 cents. After mail-in rebate, your choice only 24 cents and only at Pep Boys.
what Marcus Badger is able to do. Vallejo hit the quarterback spot. Now watch Mark. He's going to come downfield, kind of settle in, work his way right there. See that over and arm over gets him open. Now he finds the ball right down the pipe. Boy, that's good execution. As he's getting the step, getting a gain of 28 yards. Football spotted on the 17. Kaleo, the quick hit on the far side, and it's complete to Daryl Hammond. Here you see the effectiveness of a John Kaleo also. He's so good with that quick drop, firing to both sides. He will use all his weapons with equal efficiency. Well, you got to get the ball back in Hammond's hands quick. When a great player has a bobble, get it back to him quick so he can get back in the zone. Darrell Hammond, eight catches, 96 yards, two touchdowns. Two weeks ago against these very Mustangs. The flip back, moving around the outside into the six-yard line. The ball carrier was number five, Terrence Barber. Barber's a good one. He loves to run the football. He really does. Young man out of Florida in his second season. And again, you know that Coach Bruce will run the football. Take a listen to John Kaleo as he works the huddle. All right, let's go. Punching in right here. Let's go. Rip Rocket. 25. On quick. Ready? First down for the St. Louis Stampede as they try to equal us at six apiece. Kaleo from the five-yard line. The handoff goes for the touchdown. Darrell Hammond, the ball carrier. Hammond gets the first score of the night for St. Louis. Well, that's what they were trying to get accomplished on the fumble. And you know, you come back, you run it off of the side, confidence builder, and St. Louis is right back in this ball game. You know, in the arena football, we talk about running, and you, the good teams are able to do it. You control the edge, there's Hammond. I mean, gutsy, that ball gets away at the end, but this time, it counts. Tom Wheelahan to attempt the point after. From the University of Missouri, it is up, and it is good. The Stampede gained the lead, seven to six. And they do it on the ground. Earl Bruce said, last year we ran the football, we didn't win. This year we run it for the touchdown early. Every morning I wake up starving. I must feel that dreaming. So I go to Burger King for a croissant sandwich with ham, egg, and cheese, plus hash browns and coffee, all for just a dollar ninety-nine. Dollar ninety-nine? I must still be dreaming. Breakfast at Burger King. <laughs> Where in the world would you go if there were no Las Vegas? For this, you'd have to go to Rome. For our superstar entertainment, New York. World-class dining, halfway around the world. And you couldn't go anywhere for this. Head and Shoulders is now New Head and Shoulders with Mike Rodi. Better on the outside, better on the inside. St. Louis leads Milwaukee seven to six. Just about five minutes old already. Thirteen points on the board. Two weeks ago, the Stampede defeated Milwaukee. 67 to 65. It at that point was the highest scoring game ever in Arena Football League history. A combined 132 points. No kind of game you would hate to lose. I mean, you give us such a great effort offensively. That's the one thing that they have tried to, to shore up. And and Willie McClay, their defensive coordinator, assured me that you're going to like this new look tonight. We'll see. Wheelahan, the barefooted kicker out of Missouri, puts the ball back into play. Off the back net, having trouble handling the football with number 81, Terry Simeon. Boy, that hurts him. That takes the ball out of the hands of a terrific return guy. Terry Simeon, a great return game against the Stampede two weeks ago. Ten kickoff returns for his head coach, Michael Trigg, for almost 270 yards. Well, talking to Coach Bruce prior to the game, he says, this man can return the football. We fear him. So, that really won't stop the St. Louis. So Milwaukee will have 45 yards to go. They'll start off on their own five-yard line. Harry Thompson goes in motion. You hear Hamill, and he works with the Thompson, and Thompson is brought down at the 16-yard line. A gain of about 11 on the play. St. Louis 
defensively, and of course here in the Arena Football League, a lot of the same names, but let's concentrate on the defensive specialist. Number 21 is Calvin Shakur out of Central State, and on the other side you see Jackson, number one, Ozzie Jackson, and Maurice Badgen, a defensive specialist, Hammond Wood, Papadero, Harrison Garber up front. They expect a lot, really, out of Papadero up front, 99, keep your eye on him. Oh, it is a first down from the 16-yard line. Fumbled exchange, and the quarterback, Todd Hamill, is able to gather himself. And so now, from both sides of the ledger, we've seen people unable to handle what should be simplified plays. Well, you know, I, I used to think that, and not just on the indoor <laughs> game, but the outdoor game okay. as well. Quarterback and center relationship is something you go over a hundred times throughout the course of a week. Now, who's at fault? Center, I think, did a pretty good job on that. Todd got a little antsy. I think pulled away and didn't concentrate on the football. Right. Wing motion back. 60. Big go. Wing jab. On one. On one. Ready? Got that wing jab. He's going to try to get a flare in, a, in a, the outside receiver over the top. Yo! Todd Hamill. Good. And his fourth year. They go on one. He goes over the middle. And again, Thompson. Thompson has been a busy receiver. Breaks one tackle. And finally, Hammond hauls him down. But not until he gets into St. Louis territory at the 22-yard line. One of the things we talked about in the open was his ability to run after the catch. Here's a guy, again, who bench presses over 350 pounds. Former tight end, about a 4'6 guy. Watching right. nothing real complicated Wide about this. He settles down, Wide works the option route, catches, gets the shoulder square, now gets upfield. Broke right oh, through the line. arms of Calvin Wide Shakur. Wide one of the defensive on two, on two, ready? When you hear choice routes, and the offensive play is option, which usually gives a guy like Compton a route Yo! to break either in or out. Well, my Good. choice would be Compton right now, Good. wouldn't it, partner? <laughs> Let's see if they go to number two. And they do on the near side. Compton gets jammed into the sideboard by both Hammond and number one, Ozzy Jackson, but not until he is close to another Milwaukee first down. Now, if I'm St. Louis, I start to worry about 81, Terry Simeon, because now you're, you're going out to Compton and he kind of breaks out.
big number 99, Fran Papstero, wasn't in the backfield that time, so we know that's not the violation. Well, they... Boy, Stan Illegal outside rush, 42 on the defense, half the distance to the goal, repeat the try. Well, Ricky Wood at that time, he, they just trading places now. Yep. That's a fundamental deal that you can control. Wood played last year for that man, Earl Bruce as a member of the Cleveland Thunderbolt. So half the distance, and remember the first time Hamill and his teammates had this similar situation, went for two, and came up empty. If I'm going to go at it, I get the ball in the hands of a fullback. Big Craig Taylor has the touchdown. He's number 22. Close set behind the quarterback, Todd Hamill. They give to number 82, and here it is stopped short. A good defensive play by Calvin Shakur. Two times coming away empty on the two-point conversion, so it's a five-point lead early for the Mustangs on the Duke. Four minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter. This is week five of Arena Football League action here on the Duke. The Milwaukee Mustangs looking for their second victory of the season. They lead the Stampede of St. Louis 12-7. An early turnover by St. Louis turned into six points, and then that was just... Plain and simple, a very impressive drive put together by Milwaukee. It really was, but they're not finishing. You gotta get the PAT or get the two points. That will invariably come back and just kick them right in the rear end. Doctor with the kick, and it goes out of bounds, and so the flag will fall in good field position. And the special thing about arena football, you get to keep it a souvenir. I mean, I'll take a hockey puck, but I would love to have one of those. I don't football. want a puck. Not coming 100 miles an hour with glass. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't want the puck. But I'll take that. And, and look at him. He, he is making darn sure nobody tells me he can have that football. And that's better than baseball. I mean, that's baseball. Come on. No question. The big question is, though, will he go out in the backyard, throw it on the pavement with his friends, yeah. scuff it up, and you ruin it forever? You have to. Six, six, on two, ready? Very costly here in the Arena League to kick the kickoff out of bounds. Results in great field position on the 20-yard line, so just 30 yards to go for the score. John Kaleo, tight formation. With the receiver in motion on the far side. Hill is wide open, and Hill can't handle the little pass from Kaleo. There was definitely confusion in the backfield for Milwaukee. Two things, Kaleo's ability to get outside of the pocket and then for receivers, this time Ann Hill, you have to recognize when your quarterback's in a little trouble, come back and help him, but you've got to make the catch. Let's go. Fly rocket left. Here's the communication Quick between the two. Right. On three, ready? Talking to Terrence Badgett yesterday, he described Kaleo as a very disciplined leader and a guy you don't want to get in his face, but he'll admit when he is wrong. And so both guys kind of taking the blame there. Hill goes back in motion, number two, Ed Hill. Kaleo goes right back to the man, and he gets leveled at the line of scrimmage. Good hit applied by number one, Gary Mullen. Well, that's how you play defense. That's how you come up. They beat that play to death by scheme. They beat it up by scheme. They come up, and if you're going to run a little quick deal, a little hitch or flare, or we used to call them flare rides and fire routes, you have got to get a block by the outside receiver. Come up and chip it to Buddy's system. That time, the Buddy failed him. Now, it's interesting, too. And John Kaleo will look in many different directions. He'll look to Hill. He'll look to Marcus Badgett. And he will look to Terrence Barber. And Badgett speaking yesterday about his quarterback. Marcus also from Maryland. Very disciplined in his description of Kaleo. Kaleo now working on third and nine. And the football is in the hands of now Mullen. And Mullen works his way towards the end zone. And it is a touchdown for Milwaukee. Now Turnover is costly early. We're talking new look Mustang defense. They are changing things up. A couple of weeks ago, this was predominantly a man-to-man -man defensive scheme. Now they're running some zones. They're picking up matchups. And I'll tell you this. Will McClay's got to be the happiest guy on that Mustang sideline. Okay, the ball is poorly thrown. But it's a good break on it by Mullen. And now this, you turn into an offensive player in the football. Most guys go both ways. Yes, they certainly do. And that's what's so ironic about the situation of great offense two weeks ago in the 67-65 game. Point after attempt. No flag. And it is converted by the Mustangs. And they now lead this game 19-7. You know, Kaleo, and this is a situation where, again, this is a very, very confident club offensively. They have a lot of receivers, and there are things they feel like they can do. This is a case where you watch John. He comes back, quarterback there, and sets up and throws. Now, the receiver here is not looking 
turn around. He's got a poor, poor coming out of his break. The ball is behind him. And it just opens up a clear lane for Mullen to escape. Now watch this. Quarterback try to make it. It was a gutsy effort, but Mullen wanted the end zone. Worse than John wanted to stop him. Get him right. A couple of weeks ago against the Mustangs, an early mistake by Kaleo and his teammate Terrence Barber with the fumble have turned into points for the Milwaukee Mustangs. Well, give the Mustangs some, deep, some credit defensively. They altered their scheme, and now they are making things happen. And in the end zone, it's brought out by Barber. Barber avoids the tackle, moves ahead to the 10-yard line, works around Campbell, and he's forced out at the 16. American Football League, the Arena Football League tonight, and then on ESPN, Sunday Night Baseball from the ballpark in Arlington, Texas. Frank Thomas and the Chicago White Sox take on Juan Gonzalez. Texas A. Kenny Rogers, winner of his last seven starts, expected to pitch against the White Sox, Jim Abbott, and their new skipper, Terry Bevington. It's Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Start! Kaleo, under pressure, fires incomplete, and a flag on the play. Good surge from the defensive line of the Mustangs there. We just start to sense now the confidence level is overwhelming for the Mustangs. The holding is the call, though. As Campbell, number 77, Arnold, played three games with Miami, newly acquired by Milwaukee. Tell you what, Michael Trigg excited to have that guy in his lineup. Oh, yeah. They know that he's going to apply some pressure right up the gut. Now, offensively. Holding number 27 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. And that's Chad Weasling who held on. You look at John Kaleo's numbers tonight. Four for seven, 47 yards and interception. What a game last week. Five touchdowns as Iowa was defeated for the first time this season. 26 of 39, almost 300 yards in the air. Just one interception. To the near side, Sutter step, and Garrett forces the receiver out of bounds, number two, and that is Ed Hill. Sometimes in a situation like this offensive, you need to take a run in. You just need to settle you guys up and let them go off and key off of those offensive linemen. Just keep reminding yourself that you're undefeated and that you're at home and that everything will be okay if you just keep believing it. Game five of the 12-game regular season. St. Louis. Oh, oh, oh. quick, right? Ready? One of three undefeated teams along with Tampa Bay and Arizona. This OOO scheme you're going to see quick ones. Quick hits, quick out. They got options out on this. It's a pretty nice scheme. Back getting ahead of steam is Ed Hill. Ed Hill on the quick hit. He avoids the tackle. But getting a hold of the leg was number one, Gary Mullen. The OO series had a super simple football running a, on the outside game running a, a dive off tackle. Kind of gets your confidence going again. And maybe a guy breaks the Ripper age soon, 43 draw. No, Ripper age soon. Earl Bruce discussing Go. the play call with Kaleo. Press it. Ripper age zoom. 44 draw. All quick, right? Yeah, now it's time to stick that run in, see? Little Buckeye at the helm. You better believe there's going to be smash mouth football in this field. Chad Weasling. The ball carrier, off tackle, works around the outside. Weasling has room towards the end zone. He's forced out of bounds inside the five-yard line. I think he stepped out on about the, about the 11. But you see, you get a little confidence going, and you stick that run in. Because it kind of takes, you know, the Mustang, their ears are pierced back, and they're feeling great about the sales they pop one on it. At the top of the show, I said Terrapin Trio. There's John Kaleo and Marcus Badgett and this guy, yeah, the please. third Maryland player. Yes, indeed. And watch, this is nice. Good block outside. Boy, when you get your buddies helping you, Chris Hart just comes in, gets the block, he steps out, but all of a sudden now, crowd gets back involved in the game for the Stampede. The end of one quarter play, couple of costly turnovers. Milwaukee leads 19-7, but good field position for the Stampede when we come back to start the second. Concerned about your family's safety? Then note that Subaru Legacy Wagons, like Volvo Wagons, come with many safety features. Plus one even Volvo doesn't offer. Subaru All-Wheel Drive, which automatically transfers power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. One reason, perhaps, why the Legacy Wagon outsells all Volvo Wagons combined. For true safety isn't just helping you survive an accident, it's helping you avoid one. For a limited time, get 1.9% financing or lease for just $1.99 a month. 
It's breakfast, the only kind of breakfast, which is some kind of Kellogg's Pop-Tart, Kellogg's Low-Fat Pop-Tart. But low-fat's not the half of it. There's this incredibly fruity filling that makes your mouth want to shout, Hey, this is incredibly fruity filling. And the crust, it just makes you want to shout, Hey, this is unbelievable crust. And this great Kellogg's Pop-Tart taste is low in fat, which only makes you want to tango to the toaster for another. And you think to yourself, so doesn't it take two to tango? New Kellogg's Low-Fat Pop-Tart, only from Kellogg's.
Looking end zone, Hammond incomplete. Good coverage. Flying into the side was Michael James of Milwaukee. James is a good one. He yeah. really is. Four interceptions on the air. The leading tackler, the defensive specialist out of Arkansas. Well, McClay talked to me before the game. He said, keep your eye on number seven. But we're doing it so far. Michael James is getting it done. Milwaukee very efficient with their 76 yards offensively, putting up 19 points. And so a second and five situation. As eight seconds now on the play clock, so plenty of time for Kaleo. The handoff to Wood. Wood breaks one tackle, spins down inside the five, and finally he's brought down just past the two near the one-yard line. That's very impressive Mustang defense. I mean, there's guys that force the action. This time, Michael James comes up, and he is really responsible for forcing that run in so that you can run right back to the to your helpers. When you're playing defense, you got to have people that come in and really help him. And watch Seven here at the bottom of your screen. We'll watch him as, he, as the play develops. Now, he's going to take off and create a lane right there. Watch that lane. That lane there, he makes contact, and that forces the back in. Follows the attention in. You see the white shirt running over. That is the way you do it. That's textbook defense. Third and goal from the two. Kaleo spins it. Look, touchdown. Flag on the play. Marcus Batchett with a touchdown reception. Will it hold off? Well, a late flag like that usually goes against the defense. Penalty on Milwaukee. Holding on the defense. Number 11. Penalty is refused. Touchdown. Well, as a DB, you feel, realize that you're beaten, so you think, why don't I grab it? It happened right at the bottom of your screen, so you grab. Why not? You can save your club a score. That time, it doesn't matter anyway. Badger does his thing. Wheel of hand to try to put the 14th point on the board. Kaleo with the hold. Wheel of hand kick is up, and it is good. 19-14, the touchdown by number eight, Marcus Badgett. The Maryland Connection scores again. He doesn't know it, but I found this under the pillow. I flipped through these great pages on sports, fitness, adventure. Now I know where all the excitement in our life comes from. Men's Journal. He really cares about living life better. Men's Journal covers everything better, from the best in mountain bikes to fishing in Alaska, from rafting down the Colorado to building a better body. It tells them how to get started, where to go, and what to do when he gets there. Men's Journal shows them where to find the best of everything. And every issue tells them how to look better, be healthier, and build endurance. From toning up his abs to cleaning up our sex life. Men's Journal tells you everything about living life better. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Start doing it better. Subscribe now to Men's Journal for only $11.97 and get the 200-page equipment guide absolutely free. Call 1-800-863-2500. That's 1-800-863-2500. Earl Bruce's team gets their second touchdown of the evening from Marcus Badgett. Badgett suffered a rib injury in the first meeting earlier this year against the Mustangs. Badgett is, uh, has, was hurt. He's been a, what I call the old man for the last couple of weeks, but he's, he's well. Uh, early in the season, he, was, he made some great moves, but he uh, turned his ribs uh, two weeks ago against Milwaukee, and it really hurt us. We had to make a lot of things, but he is a good receiver, runs good cuts, knowledgeable about the game, and is, uh, is a joy to coach. Played off the back net, picked up by number 81, Terry Simeon, he comes near side, and hands just leveled by number 50, the big man Billy Harris in his sixth year out of Michigan. Oh, Wolverine, covering kick. Love to see those big guys getting after you on special teams. St. Louis scoring drive, seven plays, 37 yards, taking four minutes and 24 seconds, and Marcus Badgett with the three-yard touchdown. We've listened a lot to John Kaleo. Let's listen in to Todd Hamill. Bingo, bingo. On one, on one, right? They like to go on the quick count, don't they, Don? Oh, they like that Z, that bingo. This is an option right. Look for a flag off the inside receiver. This time, Compton. Compton, the man who went in motion. Hamill to the near side, completes to Simeon. He stood up at the 17-yard line by Ozzy Jackson with assistance from number 21, Calvin Secure. Terry Simeon has been a good possession receiver for this team. You know, he had more big play opportunities early on in the year. Now, you watch this again, not really complicated, just tries to show the numbers, makes the catch, and turns up field, but is more the recipient of the hammer on that one. I don't think it's like by Walter Payton. He would always deliver the blow as a bat. Well, 
perfect tonight. Six for six. The touchdown, 85 yards. Now under heavy pressure, throws it up and gets help from his receiver. Receiver made the right move there. Gary Mullen came back to try to help out. Just couldn't hold on to the football. You make an excellent point. One of the things that coaches have been saying and yelling in receivers' ears forever, come back and help the quarterback if you get into a jam. Now, this time, you've got to give a lot of credit, once again, to the guys up front. Big people, it's almost like a jailbreak. Kaleo gets, he's looking at Hammond, looks at this deal, he goes, uh-oh, what do I do with it? He throw it outside, low it away, and hope for the best. That ball could have been, should have been caught. Let's see the count. Right, we motion back. 35 loaded on three. On three, ready? Third and one situation. Football spotted on the 17-yard line of Milwaukee. Two. Hurt, hurt, hurt. On the keeper, Hamill's in trouble, and he did not get the first down. Good search by the Stampede. Watch Billy Harris. Stud on that play. Number 50. I mean, you have got to get pads, your pads lower as an offensive player. Milwaukee on that play was looking for their first rushing first down of the season, and again, they come away empty. Well, you got to get the fullback involved in this. Third time now, they've tried to get the quarterback in on short yardage. I think you hand that ball off to the, to the near back. That's why Milwaukee went out and got Craig Taylor, because they needed that extra element offensively. Got to use it. Field goal attempt coming from the nine-yard line of Milwaukee. Sucker the hole. The kick is up. And it will be played by Collins. Collins working to the far side, and he is brought down at the nine-yard line. So Sucker unsuccessful on the field goal attempt, and he is now 4 of 14 on field goal attempts this year. Stampede with the football, an opportunity to take the lead. 9.44 remaining in the half. Big man, pulled by obligation, pushed by expectation, escapes into the shadows of the unknown, drawn by the light, the mysterious red light. Big man stands alone. Hey, big man, let's get up. Yeah. Big Man realizes alone is overrated. Mysteriously smooth. Red light. Big Man's beer. You didn't say anything about dancing. Around the 
to return the favor and out for arena league. Well, that's actually the best buddy. He's hoping that he does. If not, then today, if you're out there listening, you can come support your partner, right? Look for some pump and goes at some point in time. Now, when you start breaking on the football like that, if I'm a quarterback, I, I want to take advantage of it. Third and eight. Pressure on Kaleo. He avoids it, but has to throw the football towards the side. And again, who else had the good coverage? Harris Evans meet on the near side. Michael James with the coverage on Darrell Hammond. Yeah, he's playing in an incredible amount of confidence. The Kaleo under pressure. Mustang fast run. Much improved. So it will be a 22-yard field goal attempt for number four, Todd Wheelahan. Wheelahan, this is his first field goal attempt this season. 1986, second team, Big A performer, and an honorable mention All-American from 22 out. And the kick is good, and it is 19-17, as the stampede has pulled within two. Wheelahan good on his first attempt of the year here at St. Louis. What are friends? Friends are there to pick you up when you're feeling a little down. Friends are there to rearrange someone's face when they're acting like a clown. Friends are a hamster, a fish, and an owl in Kirby's Dreamland 2. If you ain't fighting on their side, well, man, I'd pity you. Kirby's back in the family one more. Three rowdy friends at the pumped up powered up Kirby in Kirby's Dreamland 2. New the Game Boy and Super Game Boy. Will you be my friend? <laughs> Every morning I wake up starving. Who's killed that dreaming? So I go to Burger King for a croissant sandwich with ham, egg, and cheese, plus hash browns and coffee, all for just a dollar ninety-nine. Dollar ninety-nine. I must still be dreaming. Breakfast at Burger King. The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it, with the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times. It's new prescription strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New prescription strength Desinex. The doctor's cure. Now tell me the truth, partner. If you weren't up here with me, that is exactly you'd be telling that guy right there, give me a bite of that hot dog yeah. and scoot over Pass the pretzel. Or put me in the hot tub. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Women's World Cup soccer, USA against Australia tomorrow on the deuce, 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific. The U.S. is defending the 1991 World Championship. USA, Australia. Check it out tomorrow right here on the deuce. Tonight's though, Arena Football League. Mike Goldberg, Doc Walker, we're in the second quarter. Six minutes and 49 seconds remaining, and Simeon has trouble off the net again with his Milwaukee Mustangs leading 19-17, breaks two tackles, and works his way outside the 20-yard line, finally hauled down at the 22. Now you see why he is so good. I mean, can you imagine? You've got eight guys screaming at you. You've dropped that ball, and you cannot panic. Well, if you panic, you're in a world of trouble. Four plays, 31 yards, Tom Wheelahan with the 25-yard field goal to make our score 19-17. It's a great hole by Kaleo, too. It was not a good snap. Great recovery by John. And the numbers for Todd Hamill, 6 for 7, 85 yards and a touchdown. Not flashy, but extremely solid, and he has been thus far. Goes over the middle again, working into Stampede territory on the reception, number 82. That is Shane Garrett. Milwaukee so far just shown the flaw in terms of the ATs and short yardage. They can improve on that. I mean, they've got a good, good package. And Garrett, again, had a couple of good blocks so far in there. You'd like to see the receivers work themselves back in the ball, but I like to move after the catch. Michael Trick said yesterday he truly feels, despite the 1-3 and three start, last year, obviously, Milwaukee is struggling season at 0-12. They have the talent here to be successful. They really do. We've seen a good performance thus far. Hamill. Looking for Simeon. Simeon over the middle. Over the, re the outreach hand of Ozzie Jackson. And Simeon got a good feel for the football, but couldn't haul it in. It's a tough angle for the catch. He had it beat. And either Jackson just gets, I mean, fortunate to put his hand right in his face. Here you watch Gary. Now watch the little wrinkle right there. See how he's got the ball to be there. Ball is a little late and thrown back. Ball is still on his hands, though. He's capable of making that catch. See, now, he, that's what he's complaining about, and he was right. They all look good, D.B. Kind of pinch on you a little bit. That's good camera do, work, too. If they don't, they're sitting down on that couch over there. No, right? they're up here with us. <laughs> yeah, they're analysts. Hamill on third and five. He'll 
go for the same play again opposite side touchdown milwaukee Shane garrett with the touchdown reception the mustangs find the end zone again he sure did he really did you know hamill again to have that kind of poise to know that you had a throw that wasn't quite there come right back and make it happen again i like the way garrett comes off the line of scrimmage again all these receivers really nice coming out of the break See, that ball is perfect extension good catch and score See if we can take another look. Now watch Hamill. See if you can watch the eyes. Even with the telegraph on there, he knows, hey, I'm going. Stop it. And that's just an excellent route. Tucker for the PAT to make it 26-17. Hamill did a good job of handling that snap. So Kaleo and Hamill both doing a good job. He readjusts in the Mustang. Regain a bigger margin on their lead. 26-17, our score. Hockey is governed by three laws of motion. One, bodies in linear motion will continue in a straight path unless acted upon by another force. Two, a direct relationship exists between acceleration and force. Three, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Of course, some events fall into the realm of chaos theory. A force best represented as the SPM. started coaching at the University of Tampa in 1972. He was at Iowa State, Ohio State, Northern Iowa, and Colorado State. The year that was the big one for Earl Bruce, 1979 with the Buckeyes, 11-0 in the regular season, advanced Ohio State to the Rose Bowl, and I'll tell you what, it truly was at that point the toughest job in America to succeed the legendary Woody Hayes. Oh, hey, man, to that. Oh, what a collision. Still working a good return out to the 17-yard line. Uh, number six, Lindsey Collins, another guy that St. Louis likes to have here on their roster out of Missouri. Uh, Michael James, this guy, M-A-N, capital letter. He goes down on that kickoff, and some guys want to break up the wedge. Some guys think about breaking up the wedge, and then some guys break up the wedge. Watch seven in the screen. Two on one, and he stays up and still gets involved on the tackle. Kaleo, a quick hit to Harkness. Harkness, a good gainer into Milwaukee territory. Dives ahead to about the 24-yard line. touchdown reception for Shane Garrett. Come on, first and ten. Miscommunication. Collins couldn't handle the football. Regather himself. He's got a pretty decent game considering. The waste of block. Bumbling with the ball. Yeah, up front. That's done a pretty good job for you, but off and not. It's funny, we were talking before about the great offensive prowess of these teams, both struggled on defense, but you have to yell at the same right guys right. in the arena football league, because it's basically the same guys on defense. It is. <laughs> Going back, man, you remember, no different than hockey. It's exactly. the line, but you guys don't get the change. That's exactly, and that's the that's that's Quick rush in, and definitely movement on the line. Oh, Campbell, all in the middle, almost a free play. 77, Arnold Campbell, the man we talked about earlier, playing his first game with Milwaukee, a little over a crest of there. He was in the hub. You know what I mean? He's trying to complain. Hey, you said it was on two. <laughs> <laughs> you know the ongoing joke. Offside, number 77 on the defense. Three-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, you, you say to yourself, how can the nose guard be offside? Right. You know, when you're taught from pop one or on, but, I mean, you get a feel for it. You can look at the center's hand, squeeze that ball, and you can see blood. You know, the whites of the knuckles, and if that happens, then you hey, go. Hey, hey. Former All-American Conference performer for Arizona in 1993. Campbell offside, so we'll work at second and three. Cut. The handoff, the ball carrier up towards the 10-yard line. And up to number 44, number 44 Chuck Hython, number three fullback from Glenville State in the first year. Giving him the ball again when you get down short yardage, you gotta go to fullback. I got 10 8 6. Earl Bruce likes 10 8 6. He's gonna miss Rio Trip 30, 
One, two, two. All quick, ready? Going in three step, look for something quick. So we'll have a, an option on the two receiver side and see if he can make it happen. Trying to cut into this 26-17 lead. Kaleo, pressure from the backside. Avoids the pressure now. Dumps it off into the end zone. Wide open. Touchdown, Harkness. St. Louis scores again. What a play by Kaleo. You talk about quick feet. No panic. Having a feel for the game. And there's Harkness giving you his impersonation of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's really the guy who's recipient of a great effort by a quarterback that avoids the rush. Watch this. There's one. A great effort. I mean, here's a guy who keeps the feet, tucks the ball, looks upfield, sees the open receiver, and gives him a Christmas tree for a guy who has the Christmas hat here in St. Louis. Wheel of hand to make it 26-24. Well, Harkness got the touchdown, but credit the great effort to the quarterback. Number three, John Kaleo. Harkness, the wide receiver, DB, 6'2", 200-pounder, 27 years old out of Ashland, was wide open. And the reason he had time to get himself wide open is because all the pressure was in the face of John Kaleo. He did a great job in handling it. That was a great move by a great athlete. It's a rear trip. They're expecting either that or the straight. And Plummer's sitting heavy right there. That's what I'm saying. Let's try something different. Numerous, you see that? Earl Bruce, Plummer's sitting right there. Discussion. Earl Bruce almost uh, considers his quarterback John Kaleo an equal because Kaleo a great student like of the game. I like to run a stop. Don't like, realize not getting no, the This is Zoom stop. Third. Oh, oh, oh. Interesting to be able to listen in on the discussions between the head coach Earl Bruce. Something you don't get. And St. Louis scores on the 34-yard touchdown reception from Chris Harkness. And it's a two-point football game. Mustang 26, Stampede 24. Driving kick played by Simeon. He handles it on a bounce. Simeon getting a step, moving out, breaking one tackle, and then being hauled down at the 20-yard line by Fran Pastadero. I guarantee you. Simeon will get one before the evening is over. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's on the verge every time he touches the football. Well, you've got to be petrified when a guy lights you up the way Simeon did two weeks ago. Ten kickoff returns for 264 yards. Hamill working his way out to discuss things with his football team. Thirteen touchdowns, four interceptions this year for Hamill. He's played for Michael Trigg for quite some time now, since Trigg's days with the Dallas Texans. Finds Compton, the man who he went to with frequency early in the football game. That offensive line, boy, he, he they deserve a milkshake on that one. That was a great pass pro. Is that what offensive linemen want now, milkshake? Well, milkshake. I'll tell you, start winning more games. <laughs> Jewelry and cars and houses. You know, Compton, again, makes it look easy. And naturally a first down from the 10 yard line. Or first and 10, pardon me, from the 15 yard line. Played by Thompson again and he works his way. Which I expected them to get to. The 10 yard line. <laughs> the final minute of the half. Okay, okay. Back up here. We're gonna get a chance to work the clock a little bit because right. you can't stop it. Second timeout. Todd Hamill. I want left, right? I want left, Y motion back, right? And I want you to run 90, say, everybody. Go. Okay, run right by him, run the fade. Everybody's run the fade. Everybody's run the fade. Left, Y motion back, 90, fade. On one, on one, ready? Good numbers for Todd Hamill, 10 of 12. It's two incompletions on the night. All fades and when you're in the red area, toughest throw in football. The receivers yeah. have got to get off the line clean, clean. If you work yourself off clean, you got a chance for a home run. Go! Second and five from the 10-yard line. Hamill timing pattern. Simeon runs into a cameraman in the back. And Terry Simeon is shaking.
taken up? No. Terry Simeon is okay. The cameraman's taken up, and that camera is destroyed. He came right at our end zone camera, checking the equipment right now. As actually, that's the inside house feed here at the Keel Center. As you see the camera and a view of it right there. Gonna call on the backup camera. Tell you what, he's just replacing the battery. That's a strong cameraman, and his boss is him a raise to save that equipment. I think you would have kicked him in front of your butt. Oh, listen to that. Incomplete good play by Patrick as he deflects it. Harper had a shot at a score. <laughs> Why are you spending somebody else's money? Spend your own money. <laughs> <laughs> so, a big play coming up. Fourth and six. Big decision to be made. There you watch Harper. You like to drive in there. He does a pretty good job. Great recovery by Badgett. That is an excellent job defensively. Third and final timeout called by the Milwaukee Mustangs. I still like the all fade. But Badgett, you know, some guys just expand the game on national television. He's definitely one of them. Good defensive play there by Marcus Badgett. His former partner, John Kaleo, was impressed with his defensive play in the Arena League, and he obviously knows about the offensive numbers. What a year in 1992 for Marcus Badgett, his senior season. 75 receptions, 1,240 yards, nine touchdowns, breaking Maryland and ACC records, leading the nation. Marcus Badgett connecting with John Kaleo. And really all it does is continue a great tradition that goes back to Scott Golak, who had a big catch made by Karen Badgett when Badgett was an underclassman. You take a look at a Scott Milanovic there now, and of course, my favorite from the University of Maryland, number seven, Homer. The left-hander. You got that right. Yeah. No, University of Maryland, again, a great tradition for quarterbacks, and as they continue to recruit better and expand on the defensive side, they're going to get back. They're going to get back because they've got athletes. You know, both guys talked about who is still the head coach there now, Mark Duffner. And the year Duffner came in and that to put up those numbers was the first year they instituted the run and shoot. But most importantly, what we have right now, fourth and six, 17 seconds remaining. Hamill and his teammates, ball spotted on the nine-yard line. Rushes on Hamill, he throws it incomplete. The stampede hole. Carol Hammond, that's a big-time play. He's talking about your leading receiver. A guy who is Numa Raluno coming into this game in the arena football with 37 catches. He's on the defensive side making a play when it counts. Darrell Hammond, number seven for St. Louis. That's one of the reasons why people in this league refer to him. When he, I like Barry Wagner. He watched seven in the screen. Watch him on a dog. He comes straight through. Great athlete. Not going to get away from him. Puts the hand right on the ball and breaks up and makes a big play. Let us not forget, though. 14 seconds, plenty of time to score, and here comes Badgett. He's got blockers. He works to the 25-yard line. Seven seconds on the clock. Timeout signaled by Kaleo. 24 seconds in arena football is an eternity. You know, it almost feels like the NBA. You know, when there's time on the clock, you look at it in the regular game, you say, oh, there's not much to be done now. Not the case, folks. Now they're 24 yards away from taking the momentum of a great defensive stop and potentially going into the locker room with the lead. Mike, you'd be surprised if you see the net in this situation as well. Boy, this is a good, this, I mean, he's just really off. Awesome. Marcus Badgett coming back from an injury, had the bad rib cage. He is now 100% and having the best game I think he's had in three or four weeks. Well, with six seconds left, Earl Bruce is gonna try to go for the three points. Wheel of hand to kick from his own 18-yard line. Good snap to set. Wheel of hand kick is up. And it is good. Bingo. Tom Wheel of hand hitting his first two field goal attempts of the season for St. Louis. And the defensive stop turns into momentum going into the locker room. A 30-yard field goal for Tom Wheel of hand has given the Stampede the lead after one half of football being played here on the Deuce. 27-26, Wheelahan fired up again. 27-26, our halftime score. A look at the Maryland connection and a look back at the first half of play when we continue on the news. I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, 
I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects you better. Try it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you still think every deodorant works the same, take the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because now you got proof. Guaranteed. It's breakfast. A whole new kind of breakfast. With this new kind of Kellogg's Pop-Tart. Kellogg's Low-Fat Pop-Tart. But low-fat's not the half of it. There's this incredibly fruity filling that makes your mouth want to shout, Hey! This is incredibly fruity filling. And the crust, it just makes you want to shout, Hey! This is unbelievable crust. And the great Kellogg's Pop-Tart taste is low in fat, which only makes you want to tango to the toaster for another. And you think to yourself, So, doesn't it take two to tango? New Kellogg's Low-Fat Pop-Tart. Only from Kellogg. You know, working at AutoZone is more than just looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, is listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They know every rattle by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they got a problem they're going to fix themselves, I'm going to do my best to help them get whatever they need, no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them.
a discount card. Because when you need cash, timing is everything. It pays to discover the card that pays you back, except it's where you see the notice sign. You know, I got no problem with a dog being tough, but you gotta control it. Stop right there! Oh, Chef, be cool. Some dogs have been trained to be antisocial. Take this ball. Come on, boys. You act like fools. See? How are you doing, that dog? You got the goods. You don't have to prove it. Great dog to you. Bold yet smooth, easy to drink. My friend, you are a real brave. I'm real stupid. The all-wheel drive Subaru Legacy can make driving in the most difficult conditions look easy. And right now, during Subaru Save on Safety Days, we've made the financing easy, too, with three great offers on every new Legacy in stock. Choose from up to $12.50 cash back on purchases, 1.9% APR, or a $1.99 a month lease. It's just that easy, and it's just for a limited time. So see your Subaru dealer today. The boy nobody ever saw. The boy who never missed a class, but was always absent. He never knew what he thought or where he lived. That boy is right up there. Welcome back to our halftime activities here from St. Louis. The Stampede lead the Milwaukee Mustangs 27 to 26. They had one connection with the Maryland boys today. Marcus Badgett, John Kaleo. They are a well-recognized duo that has been effective in the Arena Football League. During their days together at College Park, Maryland, John Kaleo and Marcus Badgett didn't just break records, they shattered them. During Badgett's senior season, he had 75 receptions for 1,240 yards. He found the end zone nine times. For John Kaleo to put up these numbers, the timing and the system had to be right. I came from a junior college, and my junior year I didn't play that much at University of Maryland. Then the Duffner came in and gave me a shot. That's all I wanted. Ran the run and shoot, which fit me, and which I like the Arena Football League because it's a lot of passing, and I like to pass the ball. And it was a good group of seniors that uh, that wanted to do well. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have a good receiving core and a, and a good group of guys that were uh, in front of me blocking for me and was able to, you know, break numerous size and records uh, for single season. The key element in that receiving core was the aforementioned KC teammate Marcus Patchett. Uh, I think a lot of that started when John first got to Maryland. Uh, I was on the second or third team, like, uh, around my junior year, and John was, um, you know, playing backup roles, so we were um, seeing a, a lot of each other in practice, not even on the first team, and he just got a lot of confidence in me, even though we were like maybe third stringers, so it's kind of as we both, you know, moved up in our positions, it was, you know, familiar to me to see him, you know, as, as, as it was for him to see me on the first turn, you know, and he just had confidence in me and I had it in him. These two Terrapin stars now see each other as they play for the St. Louis Stampede. They've adapted and excelled to Arena League football. Marcus is a, is a great Arena football player. He's, he surprised me a lot on his defense because he's always played offense at University of Maryland and he swore he could play defensive back and I thought he was, you know, joking. But he came in here and he's, uh, he could be a defensive specialist if he just played defense. That's how uh, great of an athlete he is. So I think arena football has taken a liking to Marcus Badge and Marcus has taken a liking to arena football. We haven't seen each other that much during the offseason or, or haven't had a chance to throw. It's just a matter of um, getting the rust off. But um, it's like when, when the time is there, we both don't even have to say anything to each other. We just know it. I'm um, coming out of cuts and the ball's right there, or, um, you know, he's putting it right where I'm expecting him to put it. And it's kind of we'll just smile at each other or give each other a high five and just kind of know that, you know, we're both in tune with each other. These two guys also played together at at the half, 27 to 26. Always asking me, hey Mike, what's it like being a goalie? Let me put it to you this way. Get the picture. Nearing the start of the second half, 
Pierce the Keel Center in St. Louis, the Stampede, and the Terrapin Connection leading 27-26. Kaleo, two touchdowns, 121 yards in the air, and one touchdown reception for Marcus Badgett, 75 yards in reception. So again, those Terp Terrors have created a little bit of Mustang problems against Milwaukee tonight. And this guy, too, has been very effective. Number four, Tom Wheelahan, the rookie who has been to three NFL camps, Green Bay, San Diego, and Houston, perfect, including that 30-yarder as time expired in the first half. Tonight, he's a star. All he's got to do now is, is capitalize on it to continue in the second half. 27 and 40-yard field goal for Wheelahan in the first half. Timmy in his back deep. And the first mistake oh, made. That's not the way you start by Wheelahan. Yeah. Look at the numbers for the first 20 minutes of play. Completions by both quarterbacks pretty even. The rushing yards, though, St. Louis doing a good job on the ground. And the two turnovers is why, though, Milwaukee was able to gain the early advantage. And that's why Milwaukee got to be a little disappointed. I mean, you look at St. Louis with two turnovers, you want to make them pay more so for that. That's why Michael Curry was unhappy at halftime. Todd Hamill and his teammates took great efficiency on being productive off those early turnovers, producing him into 14 points. <laughs> Hamill with the quick pitch on the left side. The ball carrier is Craig Taylor, the former Cincinnati Bengals. Ralph Garvin, number 99, gave him a shot at the left guard spot to, to get that run in. And you start the sentence. One thing about Michael Trigg I like, you know, he played the quarterback in this game. He was a champion at this end. He's just trying to really live through Todd Hamill at this point at the quarterback spot. And Hamill so far has carried out his things pretty well. Hamill's been a backup on a few of Michael Craig's teams, and so he's earned his chance to be the man this year. Or the Milwaukee Mustang. He goes up top. Thompson was his early receiver. Thompson is in for the touchdown. Gary Thompson with a man draped all over him in the form of Calvin Shakur comes up with the early touchdown and not afraid again to express his emotion. Compton comes up like Hercules on this. An excellent route. The ball is a little late, but he goes up and just claims the ball. Some guys decide that when the ball is in the air, it belongs to them. This is a classic example of that. Compton goes up, makes the grab, and earns the touchdown. They told us yesterday, Michael Compton runs a, or pardon me, Gary Compton runs a great crossing pattern. He worked his way towards the corner of the end zone. Mustangs looking to regain a two-point advantage. High snap, sucker the kick is left. That time, Fran took the right route. Passadero gets the block, and it's 32-27. The ball's too big to avoid. Milwaukee scores first in the second. Hey, want to try new Pert Plus? Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. It's changed. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. And I don't like it. Wrong. It's a shampoo and precise blend of conditioners. Individually balanced for every kind of hair. Conditioners? Yes, they condition exactly where you need them most. A two-in-one does that? We'll see. Well, it is actually better. I can feel it. New Pert Plus in five precise new formulas. One's right for your hair. It's a lot better. Really? Every morning I wake up starving. Who's still that dreaming? So I got a Burger King for a burger sandwich with ham, egg, and cheese, plus hash browns and coffee, all for just a dollar ninety-nine. Dollar ninety-nine. I must still be dreaming. Breakfast at Burger King. Did not take the Mustangs long to strike here in the third quarter. They regained the lead, 32-27. Watch what motion does on the on the touchdown play. Watch this incompetent here comes around on the motion. What it does, it gets the trail back here caught on the island. Then you see a great move in the move action. Now watch the ball go up. He will elevate and go and take the football and score. Boy, that was pretty. Terrence Farber on the return. Sutter step at the 11-yard line. James catches him from behind. On the return, number five, Terrence Farber, first down. Now, uh, this game reminiscent of the meeting two weeks ago is a quick scoring drive of 30 yards put together by Milwaukee. Compton earning himself another touchdown on the evening. 
first meeting two weeks ago, the final stampede winning 67 to 65. That record of 132 points, though, was broken the next night by Arizona and Vegas when they put together a scoring combination of 141 points. Oh, that was points. awesome. This team knocked for the faint of heart. Babe, Babe Perilli. Lots of movement on the line. Flags thrown. Free play for Kaleo. He completes the pass to the near side. And more, play, more flags come down to the surface after the initial surge on the defensive line by Milwaukee. Yeah, Ralph Jarvis, 99, for the Mustang, earned a holding penalty on that. He was flying at the defensive end spot. What do you expect from the highest scoring game in the history? Danny White, one coach. interesting you mentioned that scoring trend though because league-wide scoring is just up about one percent i think it was from 83 and a half points to 84 combined so although we talk about these big scoring games that really hasn't been the norm this year as opposed to last year been pretty even with what the team did last year and with expansion and the expansion club yeah. coming and done well i mean the level of playing arena football this year has been outstanding iowa three and one and of course the very St. Louis Stampede off to the first ever 4-0 expansion start. Kaleo goes high and running under it, but not bringing it down. Marcus Badger. Boy, Billy Harris got away with one. 50 for the Stampede at center. I mean, the one thing about the Mustang defensive line, big time improvement. I mean, they are, they, they are bringing the dogs out on Kaleo. Hey, he doesn't look happy now. If you watch the outside, Marcus Baggins has run some really good routes. This time his quarterback doesn't have a shot. He was close to that football and can make that catch. Arnold Campbell, 77 for the Mustang, has just been possessed. Kaleo on second and ten. Dumps it off to the big man. And this time he holds on to the football. Fran Papsadero, the brawler, showing us his versatility, if you will. <laughs> The Boston Brawler. His buddies will not let him forget the fact that he dropped that touchdown pass. But this is a great call by Earl Bruce and company. This is the way you negate a great pass rush. You know, you let the dogs come out and you hit that little deep pass from the tight end. Out of Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts, was the 1985 Kodak All-American. Third and two for Bruce's team. From inside their own 20-yard line, they take it to the ground, earning the yardage with Daryl Hammond, but there is a flag on the play. Well, you can hold it quick on a running play. Jack Baker's getting a lot of work. Must have been an alignment. Charlotte, Connecticut in the Arena Football League tonight. Charlotte leading Connecticut 21-7 in the second quarter. They are angry. Whenever you let a team that has over 15 beat you, you better believe you have an awful week of practice. That was last week. Encroachment on the second neutral zone by number 82. Three-yard penalty. First down. Six. Milwaukee. Just three infractions called on the stampede. You mentioned Charlotte losing last week. 31-27 final. Milwaukee beating the Charlotte Rays. Big relief getting that first win for the Mustangs, even though it was a sloppy game. The numbers for Kaleo, pretty impressive. He'll add to them here. The reception made, and inside the 20-yard line, James brings down Terrence Barber. Again, Kaleo getting back to just a real nice quick read and reaction. You know, Garnett was the gentleman that was called for the infraction. He's the, the deal linebacker. is a, is a five-yard area that he's got to maintain. This is just pitch and catch football. You run in there, you run up against the zone, and Milwaukee's been switching things up a lot. But to see this little change from the outside game, because you can't get too close to the line of scrimmage, you got to keep a certain relationship. You can't blitz, and you can't stunt up front. So a number of things really make this game intriguing. It's the first down. Huh? First down signal for St. Louis. All right. You know, Earl's having fun. You can just look at him. Earl Bruce is having fun with the arena football. Not afraid to come on the field. <laughs> he 
was an NBA coach, he would have been teed up and tossed down about the first two minutes of the game. That's what I like about this game, though. We get to go in at halftime, the mic the quarterback. But it's got personality. That's a good point. 32-27, 10-25, remaining in the third quarter. You're watching the AFL on the two. I'd always been into electronics. But I just thought there wasn't time. Then I thought, two years from now, I can still be hating my job. Or I could be graduating from ITT test. I need some sleep, but I don't get tired like I used to. You know, it just doesn't feel like work. Call 1-800-942-0099 for details. 1-800-942-0099. This is me five years ago when I joined Pound Pinchers. And this is me now. For permanent fat loss, diets don't work. You need to build muscle. Before. After. And the best way to do that is with the Solo Flex Rocket. No matter what shape you're in, you can rock your way to a slimmer figure and more muscle. So get on the rocket today and get on the road to permanent fat loss. The Solo Flex Rocket. Call now for a free brochure and video. Our venue in week five here on the Deuce is the Keel Center in St. Louis, Missouri. 32-27 our score. Next week, the Pharaohs of Memphis travel to take on the Barnstormers of Iowa. 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific. That's Friday night on the Deuce. And two weeks from now, the Albany Firebirds take on those Coyotes of Connecticut. Albany, the Firebirds. Connecticut, the Coyotes. Arena football each Friday night here on ESPN2. Almost 200 total yards amassed now for St. Louis. Will they get in here? Badgett tightly contested. The coverage was good by number 11, Bruce Plummer. Boy, he had the Boston brawler wide open. And that's what happens. The big guy drops one, and then Kaleo doesn't want to go back to him. That was a real good call. And you watch Badgett. He's looking. There's a the hammer. Got a lot of time. Hey, 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 hey. Big man number 99, Fran Papsadero. We've said his name so on frequent occasions. Seven, eight, six, eight, ten. All quick, ready? Okay, they've got a, they're going to five-step drop, a curl. Look, probably look for the backside post on this. See if we can get Daryl Hammond involved. On second and ten from the 18. Kaleo steps up and didn't complete. Oh. communication with his head coach, Earl Bruce. Five, Ripper trip, 70. Five, nine, eight. All two, ready? Right? Let's do a number route. Let's say one number wrong. or get a ripper, a list, confused, and, you know, he can definitely uh, abort the play. They're going back Set. to something similar. Let's see if they can hit it. Third and Set. 10, again from the 18-yard line. Flags before the play, motion on the line. One would assume. We'll see what the call is. And, indeed, that uh, delay a game call, the 25 delay seconds. Delay a game. Line. On the offense, three yard penalty, repeat third down. Pushes it back to a third and 13. Awful penalty. That's why I like hand signals, you know, at some point, because if you're taking time out, all those early dog on the, on the field with him, you'd think you'd be able to come in and get that play call for him. St. Louis has been very good on third down, and coming in, opponents against Milwaukee have converted almost 50% of their third down opportunity. And that is not good defense. New look defense, thing. though. New look defense is saying. New look team period, huh, partner? But not here. Wide open. Touchdown score by Terrence Barton. Make that old look. Make that old look. First touchdown of the night for Terrence Barber. St. Louis has regained the lead. Boy, Barber talked to me early before the game. He said, I'm going to get one tonight, Doc Walker. And he definitely does. And you watch him high on the screen. He comes across. He's going to work himself right here in the clear area. He is wide open. Now, that might have been a miscue. I hate to think that the inside strong backer on that, LeCobe, would have been responsible for cover covering Barber. That's the benefit of a crossing route. Wheelahan to the point after, and it's good. Wheelahan has been perfect tonight. 
34-32, Stampede in the lead. And not only was it a third down conversion, it's a third down conversion, third and 13 for the touchdown. St. Louis 34. Everyone knows water and wax don't mix. Everyone's wrong. Introducing Wax Packs, the revolutionary car wax that disperses in soap and water to wax your car while you wash it. I'm waxing. New Wax Packs, waxes while you wash. The average person takes about 18,000 steps a day. If too many of yours are between the couch and the fridge, here's a step you should take immediately. Take this step and turn on your life. Call Bally Total Fitness at 1-800-FITNESS for your free workout. Where in the world would you go if there were no Las Vegas? What other place will you ever find where you can spend the entire day being off? Step it out. Or just winding down. And all night really living it up. Only in Las Vegas. Terrence Barber gives St. Louis the 34-32 lead with 7.50 remaining in the third quarter as we work our way through the weekend. Here Sunday night could be spent in front of the TV on ESPN. Sunday night baseball, two-time American League home run champion. Juan Gonzalez has returned for the DL. He's added more pop to an already potent Rangers lineup. Sunday night baseball on ESPN. Wheelahan kick is up and out of the end zone and so coming out with no return, Terry Simeon and his teammates from Milwaukee. And this game has really had everything. Early turnovers gave Milwaukee the lead. Then Milwaukee was effective. Now St. Louis putting together scoring drives like the one you see there with Brady Fisher. And a big third down play. Uh, it's so much talent to go to. I mean, you try to defend them. You know, Barber, his first catch, you take a look at the sequence of plays. Missed field goal, a touchdown, a field goal, and a touchdown. Milwaukee's last four possessions, they have had the ability to make things happen got to stop people. So they start from the five-yard line. After the kick went through the end zone, Simeon goes in motion. Hamill trips on himself, loses the football, recathers it, it's still loose, and St. Louis recovers. Simeon just got, or pardon me, Hamill got caught up on the turf, and he turns the football over, costly turnover St. Louis on the two-yard line. That's ugly. Very, very difficult, boy, when you start feeling yourself offensively. This is the second time they've had some problems. You know, I think what happens, it kind of looked like LeCole maybe has swatted the ball or stepped on his foot. Boy, that's a tough break, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, you can score quick in this game, and the goal line stands ahead of good one a week ago. Now you're testing. First and goal from the two. Touchdown, St. Louis. football you have got to be good at short yards and goal line give hill some credit ed hill he threw his body in and so wheelahan a chance to add on stampede lead 40 to 32 as we await the extra point Official Jack Baker didn't like the attempted spike either. On sportsmanlike on the offense, the call against St. Louis. Uh, Wheelahan will try to make it 41 32 with the clock moving under six minutes and 40 seconds. Wheelahan kick is up and good again. Boy, he's strong. He I strong. think St. Louis has found something special in that young man, number four. They love it on the deuce here in St. Louis. The Stampede lead. He's not an offensive football player, and yet he gains ground when he runs the football player. A good blocker for the, for the quarterback when he goes back to pass. Defensively, needs to get a little uh, more, uh, I guess, movement to get in to rush the passer. Because if you're the fullback, you play the Mac linebacker, and the Mac linebacker's got to be able to rush the passer. But uh, he catches the ball well, too, from the fullback spot. Made some really good catches at the fullback spot for him. Simeon on the return. And Simeon's still on his feet. 
And up to about the 13-yard line. You know, you speak of Chad Weasling, the man you see right there, number 27. He's a perfect fit for the Arena Football League. His first two years at Maryland, he played wide receiver. His last two years, he played outside linebacker. Yeah, you know, he's um, a versatile young man. As you mentioned, a guy, a prototype for this league. And, as, and Earl, I thought, was, was very candid. As he develops, he's going to be real good. Frank Wycheck is the kind of guy that reminds me of Frank playing with the Washington Redskins now. who played running back, played tight end at the University of Maryland. Uh, similar guys. You know, good athletes who can play a number of positions. Chad was a graduate assistant, assistant football coach at Maryland. So my body finally felt good as he got the three-yard touchdown run to cap off the one-play scoring Woo! drive. And Khalil, he says, is a very instrumental guy in having me back here. He convinces you to do things maybe you don't want to. <laughs> and he did this time as Garrett gets the reception inside St. Louis territory. We'll work our way back into the huddle, and Todd Hamill see how he recovers and keeps his poise after the turnover cost his team the score. Key word, buddy, poise. All right, let me have right wing over, Y high motion, 50 wide choice shot. Right, wing over, wide high motion, 50 sack, wide choice. On two, on two, ready? Three-step drop on this. I think they've got a, a built-in choice right on this. Let's go, go. You could see them go over two. to a big one. Second and Hit. one. Football Hit. spotted on the 20-yard line. Simeon in motion, flag on the play, goes near side. Completion made by Shane Garrett. He's forced out of bounds at about the seven-yard line by Ozzie Jackson. Especially when you look at a guy who loves offense so much. You saw him a moment ago, Michael Sprigg. First year head coach, obviously, in Milwaukee. Three seasons as offensive coordinator for the Texans and Dallas. And he was the head coach last year in Fort Worth. He's always loved the offense. And he was kidding yesterday saying, maybe that's why our team gave up 67 points. Because I love offense so much. But you know what? We did score yeah, 65. Right. 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 We moved him back. But he also, they, they, they gave up some points. They were also playing a lot of man to man. Can anybody would give up a lot? They're going to play man in this league against good athletes. Hamill, up top. Timing pattern in and out of the hands of Gary Mullen. Boy, he had it. Gary started trying to negotiate the inbound, you know, so he could get the feet. And you got to catch the ball, and you just let it happen and think of it. Well, there's a better one right there. Ninth year out of West Virginia. Man to play every season in arena football. I mean, he's like old Rockmore out with, this, with the Predators. Now you watch this. Now he's got good separation. He's reaching out. Now he's just go catch it. But see, he's kind of looking down, trying to negotiate the feet in, and you know, it's just tough to do. Even yeah. for a player as talented as Gary Mullen. He in 1987 with the Dynamite of Denver. Near side, Simeon. He has the first down yardage on third and four said earlier, Simeon's been a pretty good possession receiver. Ten and a half yards per reception. Not a lot of touchdowns, not a lot of big hits, at least when he's not returning the football, Doc. But well, that's the kind of guy you need in this situation. They've got three receivers they can go to. Uh, I'm a little surprised that he's not more involved in the offense, you know, stretching it. But then again, he's still got a lot of time. Uh, he's used to knowing his place in the offensive strategy. Played at Texas a and I, Johnny Bailey and Heath Sherman. Mm-hmm. Hamill. Now looks that way, Garrett, and he's brought down at the six-yard line. Flag back near the line of scrimmage. A good gainer and a good reception down at the knees by 82, Shane Garrett. Good hit by Harkness as well. Yeah. Holding the call, and it goes against Milwaukee again, and you said a second ago, can't self destruct Well, you test it now. You get your first win, you're down 15, you have a great week of practice. Holding, number 99 on the offense, eight-yard penalty, Repeat first down. Then you come out, you, you know, your morale, you feel good about yourself. You score first. And all of a sudden, now you're tested. And, you know, the character of a football club, or any, any professional club, is tested throughout the duration of the game. You never get too high or too low. And uh, they just got to believe in that. So the eight-yard penalty marks off. Three minutes and 25 seconds remaining. First and 18. 
Here in the third quarter on the deuce, the Mustangs trail by nine. Fumbled exchange again, Hamill regathers. And again, confusion at the line of scrimmage for Milwaukee. It's the third time. It's cost him now the fumble, costing him some points. Now I've had offensive games where, you know, if you're fortunate enough to win, the coach just tosses the, the, the film in the trash. This will be one of those. If Milwaukee wins this, I don't think they watch the offensive side of this. He just crashes and gets hit them next week. It was sort of that way last week, too. Sloppy game, but Michael Frick said he knows they played well in early games and lost some heartbreakers. 69-61 against Iowa. Lost 33-26 at Memphis. And then the two-pointer against St. Louis up at the Bradley Center. He scored 60 points twice. He's supposed to double Hamill. And good defensive play. Breaking up the pass is Ozzie Jackson. Well, you can stretch us up when you come in and make a play like that. But I still say at this point, Hamill's now aiming the ball. I mean, you know, he's a little late on this. Simeon comes out, doesn't come out of the break real clean. You want to snap that across. Be defined with the route. Not a good route, not a good throw. Brings up a third and 17 for Hamill and the Mustang. And another souvenir to the fans here at the Keel Center. They need a quick hitch at this point, Mike. They got to get a confidence builder in the offense. Shane Garrett to go into motion. Hamill wants to load up. Now he goes over the middle towards the end zone. And is it an interception? Yes, the interception made by out Chris Hartman. So out, out of bounds. Yeah. Nonetheless, the play effective third and 17. Going to be a long field goal attempt forthcoming, we would assume, for Milwaukee. And their kicker, number eight, Kenny Stucker. The official, he's running around too. He can't see that. He's got to count on his buddies. That's a great catch by Harkness. But he is out of bounds. You almost surrender. You throw a deep route. The guy's not open. Come back. Take a simple route. Maybe hope that your receiver can break a tackle. Get play like a team across the top. Sucker. At the 40-yard field goal attempt. High snap. Handled nicely by Hamill. Driving kick. Is off to the side. It'll be played by Terrence Barber. Barber in his own goal line. Smothered at the four-yard line. Four of 15 now field goals for that man, number eight, Kenny Stucker. U.S. Cup soccer, Nigeria at the United States. It's Sunday, and this Sunday is the 11th, 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Pacific time from Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Nigerian Super Eagles made it to the second round of the World Cup last year. It'll be a World Cup reunion for some U.S. players, and you can see it on the news. Coming up this weekend on ESPN, pardon me, on the Classic. This weekend on ESPN, as soccer coverage continues on both ESPN and the Women's World Cup that we spoke of on the news this weekend. I know you were pretty good on the ice uh, with the stick in your hand, but how about playing soccer? You are playing soccer? Yeah, I did. I was a goaltender. Is that right? Yeah, honest. You just like you know, you know, the I just didn't want to play football. I didn't like getting hit, so I played <laughs> hockey instead. Yeah, right. That was a great, <laughs> great uh, alternative. Actually, I didn't want to play football against guys your size. So. Uh, I didn't lose any teeth playing football. You lost in playing hockey. John Kaleo, 14 to 23, impressive three touchdowns and has really recovered his confidence from that early interception. That truly disturbed him. It was returned for the touchdown. Kaleo with time. Now plenty of play as he is hit by two players in white at the nine-yard line. What a knucklehead play by Hart. Yep. Hart made some great play. He's physical with all the garbage afterwards. And I'm John Kaleo. I'm not going to taunt that young man either. He's 6'5". He's 295 pounds. Don't get him upset. Out of Auburn, Randy Hart, late hit. As we'll have him gathered by Jack Baker. The sea of yellow has hit the turf here at the Keel Center. Milwaukee's just got to settle down now. Sometimes you need to bring your whole team together to tell the point. Let's just get back to know we know how to play football and don't panic. All in, 27 on the offense. Personal foul. 74 on the defense. Penalties offset. Repeat the down. Second down. Randy Hart, I mean, doing his thing. There's Kaleo. You want to see him get down. Boy, that's a nice hit. See, that's enough. You hit a quarterback. You shove him on the dashboard, board, but see, you don't need that. You're 300 pounds. And the third quarter with that penalty has come to an end. 
through three quarters of play, the St. Louis Stampede leading the Milwaukee Mustangs, 41 to 32. Back with the fourth quarter on the Duke. Good call, coach. They needed that. Sometimes you need to kick them in the butt. Sometimes you need to hug them. Milwaukee needs to hug. They really do. They can get back and, and, and compete five, once again. Five. Doc, I go all the way back to the late field goal in the first half, and it gave St. Louis the momentum. All of a sudden, Earl Bruce was the happy one in the locker room at halftime. Milwaukee was the frustrated team, and 14-6, St. Louis outscored Milwaukee in that third quarter. Definitely belonged to the Stampede. Big hit, meeting Sevens at the 15-yard line. James in the face of Daryl Hammond. I almost forgot about James. He had a blistering first couple of quarters. Now he's back and it's good to lead on defense. Mustangs need a stop. They really do. And if you're uh, with the Stampede, you can turn up the heat now. You hit a big play, you can pretty much control your destiny. Arena Special, too, ready? Ah, Arena Special. And watch this one, folks. Keep your eye on the inside receiver. Earl Bruce's favorite play. In this case, Terrence Barber. He's just sitting back and taking it in from the goal line. He says when it's run to perfection, it's unstoppable. And a big gainer there. That's good. It really is. Because it puts Barber in a position to do one of three things. And it reads all off the defense. If the defense settles back, he can run the corner. If they press him, he can run a curl or take it up. Terrence Barber, a great athlete. I mean, he's really just come on and developed real well. So he comes out of that break. Defender plays the middle of the field. He breaks it out. We asked Coach yesterday, you know, if we're listening and we hear Arena Special, well, what do you call the play? He says, Arena Special. <laughs> because I'm telling you, we'll tell everybody in the building we're going to run it. We run it effectively. Nobody can stop us. This time, a quick hit to the far side. Ball was brought in by Marcus Badger. He gets a game of just a couple of yards on the play. You should always like those plays when you know, there's one word or a symbol or, and you just knew what the whole play was. But you can't get away with that long because technology now and the way what people scout right, hurry up, and listen at you, you get in trouble. But it's a, it's a good read, good fundamental read off the inside receiver. Let's go. Mid lizard trip, 94 on quick, ready? Going back to the numbers again. Sometimes the 94 could be an outside, you know, a goal or a square in, two receiver side. The arena special I can understand. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Kaleo. Oh, plenty of time. Now the pressure on. Kaleo looks, dumps it off, and it's in and out of the hands of the big fullback, number 42, Rick Wood. We see we had an offensive lineman downfield. Whenever you see a quarterback scrambling that long, sometimes the big guys kind of drift downfield. And a flag on the play at about the 11-yard line. And big number 98, Randy Hart, is pointing the way of the stampede. In between number 44 Chuck Heinsohn, or pardon me, number 44 Conrad Lewis, and here's the call. Ineligible downfield on the offense. Penalty is refused. Third down. Now my broadcast partner made the point that Kaleo looked like he had some time. Uh, you consider this time you'd be Kaleo. You'd be the quarterback now. Now he does. But at that point, I don't think so. That's like <laughs> 104. Now he's changing out. And uh, it, it happens every time. One of the big guys will drift downfield. Handles the bad exchange. Flags fly all over. The pass incomplete and the hit laid by number three, Kenny Harper, on the intended receiver, number five, Terrence Barber. Notice how Milwaukee started to initiate a little contact. Yep. Well, a great point you made. Sometimes you got to kick him in the butt. Sometimes you got to hug him. And so far, from the big hug from the head coach, Milwaukee's responded defensively. Yeah, and Will, Will McClay, the defensive coordinator, uh, he was really looking forward to it. Illegal skip. Two men moving on the offense. Penalty is refused. Fourth down. And they're not pushing him back. They're saying, come on at us. We'll stop yeah, they really you. are. They're going to take it with aggression, and I like that. I think Will McClay's doing a good job. 39 yards and penalty. Too many penalties on Milwaukee. Field goal attempt by Tom Wheelahan. He has had a great performance tonight. From the 22-yard line of zone, has made 25 and 30 yarders. Wheelahan's kick is up again. And it is good. Oh, the man has been splendid tonight. Tom Wheelahan out of the University of Missouri. 44-32 St. Louis. Pushing camera three, hand right, hand right, cut to camera two. Oh, what a shot. Timeout is called right now. Shaq's 
got to do something. We can get back in this yeah, game. Go commercial. That third field goal of the night by Chris Wheelahan was the effective pursuit of the arena special. So, Coach Bruce, what is it? Arena special is where you take the outside two receivers and hook them up about 10 yards. Then you take that middle guy with all the speed and run him right at their, their best, probably, defender. And he's got to make a, a, well, a right turn, a left turn, or stop and, uh, and catch the football. And that's a lot of pressure on a defensive back. You know the old adage, speed kills. Arena football speed kills you because they're going to run away from you. And Terrence Barber was the man on the arena special who made the reception. And a couple of costly penalties, but still, St. Louis comes away with three points. Wheelahan kicks through the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20-yard line. It's been the only flaw in his game tonight. Other than that, I think he's headed towards the Wilson Most Valuable Player Award. Uh, he was tough in his days at Mizzou. Holds the Big 8 record. He had a 62-yard field goal in 1986 against Toronto. He gets the 37-yarder there. Seven-play drive, resulting in three points for the Stampede, who have had plenty to cheer about as they push themselves a 12-point lead. But with 12-19 remaining, that is a very small lead. Somebody told me yesterday, Doc, compared to basketball, because there's 12 minutes on the clock, a 12-point lead is nothing. John Kaleo mentioned that. In basketball, you got plenty of time to come back. Same story down on that field. Mustangs did a good job. Hey, they held them to three. Now they look for seven of their own. Simeon carry on the near side into St. Louis territory with another reception. This offense needs to score, and they need to score quick. And you come back out and try to win it on defense. Todd Hamill. Left, wing over. Wahan motion, 72. 50 stack, wide choice. On one, on one, ready? The number five passer in Arena Football League statistics. So far this season, number one just happens to be his counterpart tonight, John Kaleo. But Hamill will work from the 23-yard line. Kenny Harper in motion. Hamill looks near side. Fluttering pass is too short for Terry Simeon, the intended receiver. Good read, too, by Hamill. He really wanted to go at Harper, and Harper was covered. Covered very well. The one thing about Calvin... Uh, Shea Gore has done a real good job. He got beat on the opening play when he fell down. This didn't man. He has really had the hammer, the mallet, rather, on defense. St. Louis, you see the past defensive numbers in the first four games, 237 yards a game. Doing a good job tonight against Todd Hamill in Milwaukee. But still 10 minutes plus remaining in the fourth quarter. Cross in, quarterback hit, thrown towards the end zone, incomplete. The man did Hammond get in the backfield in a hurry that mallet with him. He's a little gimpy, but he can ill afford to lose his services right now. Take a little ground level look at it again. A 21 here. Watch him right here on your screen. He's going to break on the ball. Now, he gets a hit. And what happens is that pretty good pressure inside, as you mentioned, by Hammond. Hammond, a young man who is leading the league in interceptions, plays great at the, at the weak linebacker spot. You said it earlier. Earl Bruce considers him the most complete Arena League football player. Well, he's a graduate assistant at Penn State, coaching the secondary. We'll take the timeout as it's caught on the field, and you get a look at number seven, Daryl Hammond. He and his teammates on the stampede lead by 12 in the fourth. Touchdown. They are signaling touchdown as he rolled over, was not down on the play, and on a fourth and three, Milwaukee scores the six. Badger went for the stop on the play. Boy, that was a gutsy call. But, I mean, it's the only call you got to make. You're trailing. You want to get some momentum. Your defense is playing well. And we take a look at it. And Hamill drops back, rips it off. Boy, Compton, watch this. I mean, he is down, but nobody touches him. Puts the handstand. See, that was a belly tackle. You don't lock up with the arms and get a score. 
third touchdown reception of the night for number two, Gary Compton, in his fourth year, the number five receiver in the Arena Football League out of East Texas State. And the two-point conversion attempt, and a flag before Todd Hamill able to run the play as the play clock, the 25-second play clock, ticks down to zero. Wait, wait, wait. move yourself a couple of yards out. Do you still go for the two? No, I, I think I'd give a regular offense then. I think Michael Strick thinks the same That's thing. The point. Snap. Ready? Here comes Kenny Tucker from the kicker. Tucker's going to kick it and try to gain the one point and make this a 44-39 game. Well, you've blown two opportunities so far. Yeah, it's crazy Pretty soon, you know, you're six points down. You can't afford that. And that was from, you know, the two-yard line. That was halfway to the goal line. And he missed it anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, the two two-point conversions in that pretty much separate us tonight. The Stampede holding on to a six-point lead. This is me five years ago when I joined Pal Nine minutes plus some change remaining. And good field position, Barber can't handle, and they'll work it out. Of uh, the end zone on the kickoff from a man who has really struggled with his field goal kicking this year, Kenny Stucker. Missed both tonight, and so really there have been opportunities for Milwaukee to put together some scoring drives. They come away with just six again on four plays, 30 yards, two minutes and 25 seconds. Gary Compton, his fourth touchdown of the contest. Boy, he's been a mule. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is, he's done it all. Now this defense has got to come through. You need your sack and INT. You got to make some things happen. Well, either you know, Stampede could really do things up. Kaleo. Quick hitter to Barber. Barber works his way up to the 12-yard line, and Parker was there to meet him. If you make an offense settle for three in this game, you've really done a lot. A St. Louis Stampede trying to go to 5-0, and oh, and that's why Michael Trigg said that it's such a, an important game tonight. You get to look at the total yardage for St. Louis, 259 because it would be a four-game advantage in the standings in just a 12-game season as we would be nearly halfway through the season, working our way to week six. And big difference between a 5-0 and and a 1-4, and four, obviously, but a 4-1 and one and a 2-3. and three. You want to sweep anybody in your yeah. division. I mean, that's the level of intimidation. Plus, I think football people recognize that Milwaukee has, has the ingredients. But sooner or later, they're going to catch fire. You want to get rid of them. And based on last year, the toughest part of the schedule lies ahead for Earl Bruce's counterpart tonight on the Milwaukee sideline because they go against Orlando and Arizona in the next couple of weeks to the Milwaukee Mustangs. And that's, that's rough. Third and seven, important play here for Kaleo. Kaleo dumps it over the middle. First down yardage game by Daryl Hammond. Hammond's been a little quiet on the offensive side. I mentioned the graduate assistant at Penn State. You know, he's uh, working on his graduate degree in term science. George Toma is his idol. He wants to get into the specialized in the grass and turf and all things. Is that and right? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. A Cavalier spent some time up with the uh, Mitty Lions. Can you do that? I think you can. Okay. He's doing it. I mean, could you go hang out in Dallas? Uh, yeah. Oh, you could. Now you could. Well, it depends on how much money. <laughs> <laughs> Kaleo now works in another first down. The yardage gained by Terrence Barber. Well, you look at Badgett, Barber, some of the other offensive weapons, and you can start to realize, though, also, we talk about Milwaukee and their effectiveness. Why does St. Louis team is so effective? It takes players to be successful. Badgett, legit. Hammond, star, Luke Barber. I mean, great athlete. Kaleo has his pick. And this offensive line, I mean, let's face it, they've done a real good job. He's had to scramble a couple of times, but he's got good will. And a good gainer for the first down yardage now at the 19-yard line of Milwaukee. St. Louis leads by six with six minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Chad Wiesland breaks the tackle, works inside the five-yard line, forced out of bounds by Michael James. Good call, Earl. That was a good call. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what do you do at this point? Just about that time he's done it. Well, Chad has just earned it. He just carved out a little niche for himself. Big guys up front. Boy, that Billy. Billy Harris has really had a monster game. They spotted at the four-yard line. As the clock continues to tick down, 
And John Kaleo looking to add on to this lead. The second half truly being owned by the Stampede of St. Louis. They go the same way, Weasling, and he works his way for a gain of about two yards to the two-yard line. It'll bring up a second goal situation. What a hammer. Bruce Plummer comes up with a nice stick. I mentioned earlier part of the story. This is the guy that John Kaleo talked out of retirement. Chad Weasling, his former teammate at Maryland. That is the Terrapin Trio. Weasling, Marcus Badgett, and John Kaleo said, you know what? He said it was a good thing for me, and I trusted him. I don't know why I trusted him, but we're 4-0, maybe 5-0. I'm having fun, so I'm glad I did. As he works his way towards the sideline, gets crammed into the side just short of the goal line, and that'll bring up a third and goal. And Weasling is the workhorse now, and Earl Bruce playing old Ohio State-style football, keeping it on you the know, ground. He loves this, man. Three yards, and they used to, they used to say an Ohio cloud. You know a little bit about that Ohio football. No question about it. Holder High School, boy, back in, uh, and you, you know that was big-time powerhouse in high school. 22 on quick, ready? Over there. I love the dasher board. Watch this. I mean, is that fun or what? Receiving or taking the hit? Watching. Third and goal. No, watching. Yeah, there you go. Watching and being broken <laughs> play and flags all over the place. And the touchdown probably won't hold as there was movement. And flags thrown with frequency on the third and one play. The keeper by Kaleo. It's all Kaleo. If, if it goes against the Mustangs, it's just all reaction on Kaleo. We have illegal procedure on the offense. The tight end did not declare. We have offside on the defense. Penalties offset. Repeat third down. Boy, look at the effort by Kaleo. And then you get a tight end that just doesn't identify himself and you lose. That's desperate. You can't coach that. There's a kid that just reacts. He's a football player. That brings up, most importantly, a third and one situation once again. Third and goal from the one yard line. 421 remains. And the clock ticking away. And Kaleo gives to his partner at Maryland. And Weasling has stood up. He did not cross the plane of the end zone. Now that was a gutsy approach by the Mustang. If they want to win, they're going to have to show it right now We're up defensively. We're by nine if we make this. Huh? We're up by nine if we make this. Take what? We want to kick the field goal. Well, it's one thing to make a decision when you're pumped up with adrenaline. Sometimes he's a guy that's not so pumped up to make that call. He's got a hot field goal kicker. Yeah, it. Up by nine if they make it. So, Wheelahan will kick from the eight and a half yard line. About a 18 yard field goal attempt to chip shot up and good. Boy, he's smoking. Smoking tonight. Wheelahan, the former Big 8 All-Star added to the St. Louis League. I understand it, and I think to be an excellent head coach in this league, you have to be a good innovator, with a, you know, have a good offensive mind. And I feel that I have a good offensive mind. I've helped put, you know, put in this offense with Earl. Earl and me have worked hand in hand. And um, I think it's within reason that I could be a head coach in this league and, you know, in, a, in a few years, and I wouldn't mind doing it. Well, he might get his opportunity, but if he keeps playing quarterback like he has this evening, really all this season will be a little while before he becomes a head coach. Well, he'd like to be at the MCI building, uh, new arena that will be up at the nation's capital in 1997, where arena football was the nation's capital, and I'm sure that uh, there are a couple of groups that would like to see it come back. And you saw the scoring drive capped off again by a field goal by Tom Wheelahan. It's interesting when you look at the head coach across the field, a former quarterback, a former successful quarterback in Michael Triggs. So it is not above the reality of the fact that truly we could see a John Kaleo as a head coach someday in this league. The thing I like about it, the same thing goes with Daryl Hammond. At least they have goals, they set goals, they know what they want to do and they talk in the future, and that's good stuff. We had a nice conversation with uh, quarterback Kaleo yesterday, and he just loves the game, loves the environment. And love to see big plays defensively by his teammate, Ozzie Jackson, there. Oh, nice. Very nice. Jackson has a little bounce. This corner is very confident. I've been waiting for him to try to stretch and get Simeon more involved in the, the deep passing game. Becoming crunch time here for 
The Milwaukee Mustangs hoping they will not fall to one and four. Second season in the Arena Football League opened 0-15 uh, in their existence. 0-12 last year, 0-3 this year. They get a score to stop in the field goal. They can win it. In motion is number two, Gary Compton. Compton has been the workhorse, and Compton receives football again. Short of the first down, though, at about the 12-yard line. He's been good. He's been very good. Time becoming the enemy now. Two minutes remaining. Left, one high motion, 73, bingo. On one, on one, ready? 73, bingo, on one. Clock ticking down to one minute and 50 seconds in this fourth quarter. Go! Quick drop, finds Compton, Compton into St. Louis territory. Not about to the 23-yard line. The clock continues to tick down with one minute and 30 seconds remaining in the contest. I'd like to see Mullen get back involved in this offense. Don't forget, he's like a little sleeping weapon. Compton breaking towards the end zone. First sack of the evening. No. What a job done by Todd Hamill, but he was pulled down backwards on his ankle, and Hamill's coming up with a limp. Yeah, boy, that did not look good. No, not at Great all. Great courage, though. Boy, he hung in and got the completion out to Mullen. I somewhat envisioned to get a little further downfield. What an effort to avoid the sack. It was. Both of these quarterbacks were very, real nifty. Great competitors. See, well, you see it happen so often, the guess who's in there. Number seven, watch it right at the bottom, the ankle, Daryl Hammond. I mean, he just makes plays for you. If he's not on the offensive side, he can do it defensively. You know, he says, I consider myself a defensive player, but I know I can get things done on the offensive side. The all-time leading tackler, playing the last four years with the Albany Firebirds. Two years collegiately in Virginia. Been a little bit more offensive this year, but tonight it has been, as you mentioned, partner, his defense that has really been stellar. Mm -hmm. Hamill, again, end zone, Thompson, touchdown, Milwaukee. Boy, do they have over. a good thing going or what? Now, we talk so much about the connection of Marcus Badgett and John Kaleo, but truly you have to be impressed with the efforts of number two, Gary Thompson, and his quarterback, Todd Hamill this evening. I call Compton the mule because he just <laughs> keeps working, man. He gets himself open. He makes plays. He's enthusiastic about it and has a lot of confidence. And he knows he's good, and he backs it up. To make it a two-point game. Kenny Stucker makes our score 47-45. Remember the last one ended in fireworks two weeks ago. A two-point game then. 54 seconds remain in the fourth on the Duke. With remaining, we go all the way back to the first half from the two-and-a-half yard line, not once, but twice. Gary Compton and his teammates unable to convert on the two-point conversion Make attempt. it three times with the missed PAT. That's right. Look at Compton. Look at these numbers, man. 12 receptions, 187 yards, and five scores. The career numbers, man, for no tight end. 54 seconds left. You go for the trickery, you go for the onside kick here. Oh, this, the onside kick is on that bar, those nets, because you still want a little field position. And I think if you get it up and get up and get after them, uh, you still have, have some time. Oh. Hitches. 
Right formation behind Todd Kaleo. Pardon me, John Kaleo. He gets it up, and the reception is made by Terrence Barber. And the timeout quickly called by Milwaukee. Now defensively, Will McClay can say to himself, maybe I press and force the fade route, try to get the interception. Now the strategy really comes to the forefront. So the clock stops on a timeout called by Milwaukee with 44 seconds remaining. Left and throw it. Give him some room over there. Okay. Get some room. Get it out by the head. You got it? There. One first down almost does it. Yep. Unless he comes up and bumps you, then take it by him. Let's go. Fly zoom lizard. 37 0 on two. Ready? Once again, folks, back to the all hitch, but if it's versus press, if Milwaukee comes up and press them, it wouldn't surprise me to see them run the fade. Looser formation this time as they got away from their own goal line. Completion to Barber, and he has the first down yardage. Barber motioning that he had the first down at the big arena special earlier as Milwaukee uses their second timeout with 40 seconds remaining. Again, 50 yard field. That's right. I'm really, that'd be good numbers outdoors. 50 yard field. What do you think about the dashboard? Remind you of the puck? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But I'll tell you what, I don't think you get dove into as much in hockey. I mean, these guys really to put the head down and they get lower in the boards than the hockey hit than the hockey hits. The hockey yeah. hits you, you take higher in your body. Right. That's a good point. But absolutely. But you can get a straight head. I mean, they hit the, the time things that make me cringe is those helmet shots right in the but dashboard. The, but the same principle as you know, being a player, Doc, you let the body take the shot. And even in the open field, you try to let the body take the shot a little bit. But that's what you were always taught as a hockey player when you got on the boards. If you tried to fight it, you were in trouble. Mm -hmm. Let the body take the shot on the dasher boards and. <laughs> St. Louis looking to get another first down. They got the first down yardage, first and ten. They stay on the ground with the safe play. The ball carrier is Rick Wood. And up to number 42, Rick Wood. Now they choked out the timeout. Yep. And now one first down to yeah. bring this game to an end and take the St. Louis Stampede to five and all. Just one of three undefeated teams as we started week five in the Arena Football League. Tampa Bay, Arizona, and St. Louis all undefeated to start this 1995 season. Quite a contrast from the first time these two clubs met, but you have to look at this as improvement on the side of Milwaukee. I mean, offensively, I mean, they scored just about every time they had the football. The defense, I think, is grossly improved, uh, and the Stampede will be fortunate to pull this thing off, but they're at home, and, you know, good things happen to you, man, when you got a quarterback that can make plays. Merrill Bruce did not have this kind of fun last year with the Cleveland Thunderbolts. Just a record of 2-10. and ten. And he's got a quarterback he really likes in John Kaleo. And he's given him the freedom Set. to run this football team. And Kaleo ran with it again tonight and runs with the football now. As he breaks the tackle and goes in for the touchdown. St. Louis is on its way to a 5-0 and start. He earned it. I guess it was only fitting that the ball be in his hands. Another great call, Earl Bruce. Giving your quarterback who has great wheels an option opportunity. Michael Triggs still coaching, trying to figure out, hey, look, we'll have some time. A little option right. I love this eye-opening shot. Camera, fullback, good clock. I think that was Ricky Wood on the block. Kaleo just kind of stretching out. Don't stumble, man. Boy, and the hammer went for his head. Big PAT because this would take it to a nine-point lead. And missed he missed it. it. Ah. He still got a ball game, partner. Still got a ball game. And that's why Michael Trigg was still coaching, trying to get his two ready. The key now in this kickoff, he can make it back up. He just put the ball on the ball. 21 seconds, plenty of time to get an offensive play. But Milwaukee is out of timeout. Talk about excitement. Watch the flow of this. 
will happen right about here. The good block by Wood. And then Kaleo shoots up. You got, boy, the Boston Brawler with a key block downfield. And there's Kaleo. He makes it. Watch the hammer. Boy, the hammer was going for one of those head knockers. Two weeks ago, Hamill went off the net to Garrett with no time left to bring Milwaukee within two points. And then the two-point conversion was missed as Kaleo, as it was two weeks ago, has another big game against Milwaukee tonight. But this is now getting to the point where it could be similar to what we saw two weeks ago when it was a 67-65 victory. For the six, potentially. Pulled within two. And then go with maybe no time remaining again to try to tie the game and force an overtime period. Kick played by Kerry Simeon. Simeon works at the five-yard line. Good coverage. He's brought down at the five-yard line by a combination of red jerseys led by the man you spoke of all night long, number seven, Daryl Hammond. Yeah, Hammond has had uh, a, a quiet game, but a very productive game. I mean, here's a guy, again, was leading the Arena Football League in reception prior to this game, and he's got it done on defense. 17 seconds all on right, the play, Tom. Three motion back. 61, Zico, Bingo. On one, on one, ready? We'll see if they go for it all, though, on this first play from their own five-yard line, 45 yards away from trying to pull to within a two-point deficit in this contest. Hamill, he goes for half of it. It's incomplete. Flag on the play. on the near side. Hamill dumps it off to Compton. Compton forced out of bounds with seven seconds. Pardon me, eight seconds. The clock stopped at eight seconds remaining. And Michael Trigg sees his team get up to about their own 21-yard line. Now you shoot for it, huh, partner? Or do you have time? Yeah, they... He's in range. He has no other choice. I still, I still think I keep my eye on Gary Mullen. Okay. I, I don't think they're going to let Compton get open. I'd be stunned if Compton's able to beat him on this. And it's not Mullen. Watch Kenny Harper. Kenny Harper in his fourth year out of Hawaii. He goes into motion. Time ticking down. They go to number two. Compton. He gets out of bounds again at the 17-yard line. Three seconds on the clock. All right, we're going to have to score. Where's Yogi when you need it? I want to back. I want 50. Hit special. Deep cross. This is it. Run, deep cross. 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 I can't believe they're going to try to get that ball back in the hands of Compton. I guess so. You rode him so far. Down by eight, three seconds remaining. Last play of regulation. Hamill. Look. End zone. Intercepted. Ozzie Jackson with the interception. The run back means nothing because St. Louis has earned the victory here at home. They are now 5-0. and all. He had Compton open. He had him open. He simply missed him. My goodness. Michael Craig's team loses to Earl Bruce. The defense gets the stop in the end for the St. Louis Stampede. As early, some turnovers and mistakes made by Bruce's team, but they held when needed. I cannot believe that Compton was able to work himself open. He is open there, folks. If that ball is outside, we might have a heck of a finish, but we do. If you're a Stampede fan, Ozzie Jackson with the INT. 
for Doc Walker on Mike Goldberg. Our final score here tonight, the St. Louis Stampede, 53, the Milwaukee Mustangs, 45. Tonight's Arena Football League game has been produced by ESPN in association with High Bar Productions. We say so long from St. Louis. Coming up next, NFL's greatest moments. Hope you enjoyed the Arena Football League tonight. Here on the news, we'll see you next Friday in Iowa. So long, everybody.